Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 1st of April 2019 and the time has just gone 9.25 GMT. I'm sorry, 9.25 BST, British Summertime. The clocks change here in the UK over the weekend. Uh, so yeah, the time has just gone 9.25 uh, BST, 9.25 AM in the UK. Uh, we've had a strong start to the European session. Uh, we've had some positive manufacturing numbers out of China over the weekend. Uh, if we go to our trading platform and take a look under the market pulse tab, and the fourth option down is the market calendar. Uh, over on, on Sunday, in the early hours of Sunday morning, uh, we had the official uh, figures in Beijing, the manufacturing figures in Beijing, and the reading came in at 50.5, topping the forecast of 49.5, and as improvement on the previous month's reading, of 49.2 and then in the early hours of, of Monday morning uh, we had the Kaishin survey uh, of Chinese manufacturing which is deemed to be um, more impar deemed to be more impartial because it's a private survey rather than the, the government official survey uh, but they also were, 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 quite, were, 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 were positive whereby the reading came in at 50.5 so it's an expansion territory which is positive and it, it exceeded the, the forecast and the forecast was for a uh, rating of 49.9, so I topped the forecast, and it also it was an improvement on the previous month's rating of also 49.9. So the strong manufacturing figures out of China, both reports, combined with the fact that we've had um, fairly positive updates between the US and China in relation to trade negotiations and trade talks. At the back end of last week, we, we, we had a, um, a lift higher in European and US stocks, because of um, because of the, op the optimism surrounding U.S. and China trade, and now we're seeing um, not great figures out of China, but definitely improving figures out of China, and that is really and that's really lifted um, uh, equity global equity sentiment. Um, so what we're seeing is some quite decent numbers um, out of China over the weekend. What we just saw there was the uh, the, the UK flash manufacturing figures came in at 55.1. A very strong uh, reading, well above the 51 uh, reading that, that was expected, and I saw that improvement on the 52 reading that, that was previously expected. Now you could argue that the the jump in manufacturing and the run up to Brexit could be construed as a sign that people in the manufacturing sector here in the UK are wanting to get their business done ahead of Brexit, uh, because this report was obviously the report uh, for the month just gone for the month of February. Um, so this is so it could be construed as a work being front loaded, but nonetheless, it's a solid reading, and it was certainly better than the updates that we saw out of France and Germany, which both had disappointing manufacturing numbers. But overall, stock markets around the world are in, are in quite decent shape, um, and we we'll start off by taking a look at the FTSE 100. So the wider picture, and this is a common theme throughout um, global stock markets, they've been bouncing back since uh, since, since uh, late December so a nice series of higher highs and higher lows on the FTSE 100 as you can see here now we are now back above this red line here which is the 30 moving average and the 30 moving average is often seen as kind of a barometer if you're if you're above the 30 moving average sentiment is positive if you're below sentiment is negative so we're back above it which is positive um, it, the, the 30 moving average comes into play at 7225 we're currently around 7,347 or so, so we're well above it. If you look to press on higher from here, we could be looking at re retesting the recent highs of 7,370, which are racked up in late March. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking heading up towards 7,400, big psychological number. And if you take on that level, we could be looking heading up towards this area here, not seen since uh, since late September of, uh, of 7,558. If you do manage to drift lower and actually move to the downside, um, we could find some support coming in play at this region here, the uh, the, the late February low of 7,040. Take a look now at what's going on over in Germany. Uh, the DAX is also in, in, in quite positive shape. The DAX is pretty much at 11,700, and it's a fairly important metric. On the DAX. So take a look at the wider view. If you take a look at this area here, uh, around 11,690, 11,700, this this this, uh, this line along here, we can see that back uh, early last year in um, in February, in March, and in and uh, February and March last year, 
we saw that at the kind of six thousand, sorry, eleven thousand six hundred ninety or, or seven hundred mark. Once it was a very decent level uh, of support, and if you draw a line along that line from there, we can see that as the market was pressing higher. Um, in early March, it ran into resistance at that market, it shied away from it, then it broke above it, and now we've pulled below it, and then we actually managed to run up trading pretty much on it again. So I think it, it could be a fairly significant metric uh, this time around. Again, if we can manage to break on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting uh, the mid-March high of 11,823, and should we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the uh, 12,000 area. If we do manage to add uh, the, the drift lower and pull back, support might be found might be found from this blue line here, uh, the 50 day moving average. We can see on a few occasions recently it did manage to act as support. And if a metric acted as support in the past, it makes it more likely they will act as a metric as an important metric in the future. So support might be found at the 50 day moving average, which comes into play at 11,386. Take a look at what's going on over in the US. I'll start off with the S&P 500. So S&P 500 uh, gained over gained 13.1 percent in the first quarter. It was the strongest first quarter uh, to the S&P 500 since 1998. So I give indication of how bullish uh, the S&P has been in recent months. Uh, we can see here that the already we're, we're, yeah, with the, the futures are indicating the S&P 500 is going to open not too far away from the high of 2019, up around the kind of 2,856 mark, uh, and the high was in around the kind of 2,860 region. So we're in a solid upward trend for the last few months. If we continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this region up around here at 2,865. And then should we go beyond that, uh, the, the big psychological number of 2,900 will then come into play. If the market does manage to drift a bit lower, support might be found from, from this area here, uh, 11,220, 11,218. Uh, we can see that that region acted as resistance in October, November, and also December. And it managed to act as resistance again in early March. And we've seen some, we've seen a bit of consolidation in around it. So if we do manage to drift a bit lower, the kind of 2,820 or 815 mark could act as support. And even if you drop below that, a uh, support might be found from this area here in uh, 2,784. It's a fairly similar situation on the Dow, with the Dow Jones, we're obviously bouncing back since December. Uh, we're not too far away from the uh, from the highs of 2019, so solid upward trend uh, in, in the last number of months. We do appear to be kind of pressing higher and uh, looking at retesting this area here, the kind of the highs of 2019. If we can press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this area here at 2006, sorry, 26,278, which was the kind of high achieved in uh, in early November. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking heading up towards the psychologically important 27,000 mark. If we do manage to drift a bit lower, uh, support might be found from this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes into play at 25,000. <laughs> uh, 25, 527. We can see on a few occasions that this the, uh, the 50 moving average acts as decent support uh, recently and as I just said uh, in the last chart, if a metric uh, proved to be important recently, it makes it more likely that it will be important again in the future. And even if you drift, drift below that, support might be found from this red line here, the 30 moving average, which comes into play just north of, of uh, 25,200. Take a look now at what's going on in the gold market. So gold, despite the fact that gold has actually managed to drift a bit lower uh, in, the, in the last few sessions, partially because of the strong US dollar, and the dollar is partially strong because of the weakness in the euro, given the, the given the poor economic indicators coming out of the eurozone, and also some of the kind of political uncertainty in relation to Brexit. The pound has also been in some cases weak because of the political uncertainty in relation to Brexit. So traders. Uh, wind, wind up seeking out safe haven currencies such as the US dollar and there's, there's an inverse relationship traditionally between the US dollar and gold because gold is, is traded in US dollar so recently we're seeing a better pressure being applied to gold but gold remains in the kind of solid upward trend that has been in since November last year really it's been pushing back since August but fairly solid upward trend since November 
Uh, and if you can hold above this area here in around the 12,000, sorry, 1,276 mark, 12, 1,280, if you can hold above that, it's likely we could see the wider move to the upside continue. And if you do see the gold market pushing higher again, we could be looking at, uh, at uh, taking out this region here, just north of uh, 1,320. And should we go beyond that, we could be looking heading up towards uh, the February high of in around 1,346. Move to the downside. If you do manage to break below 1,276, that could pave the way for further losses. Take a look now on Brent crude oil on the oil market. So oil has managed to hit uh, a fresh multi-month high levels not seen since November last year. It has been making huge strides to the upside, but by and large it's been kind of slowly kind of grinding higher in the last few months. Um, we're not too far away from the kind of psychologically important $70 per barrel. Uh, and if you do manage to get a bit of a pullback in the price of, of Brent crude, we could find some support coming from, from, from this area here in around the kind of $66 per barrel. And even if you drop, drop below $66 a barrel, support could be found from this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes to play just, just north of $65 per barrel. Take a look now at WTI. Similar situation whereby WTI hit its highest level uh, since November last year. So we're talking multi-month highs, giving an indication of how positive and how bullish sentiment is. If we can press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this red line here, the 200 moving average, which comes into play at 61 spot 60. 61 to spot 64 and if you go beyond that uh, this area here potentially at 62 spot 50 might act at also active resistance if you do manage to drift a bit lower on on a um, on wti support might be found from this this area here in around 58 spot 10 and if you do drift, drift below 58 spot 10 Support could be found from the kind of 57 region. It acted as resistance on a few occasions uh, in, in early March, so there's a possibility it might act as support in the near term. As I mentioned, uh, the euro has been sorry. As I mentioned, the dollar has been relatively strong because of weakness in the euro because of <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. The dollar has been strong uh, recently because of the weakness in the euro, uh, partially because of the slowdown in, uh, in some of the pro-economic indicators from, from the eurozone area, but also because of uncertainty in relation to Brexit. And as we can see here, uh, since early January, so for over three months now, there's been a solid downward trend in the euro dollar. So a nice series of lower lows and lower highs. Granted, I'm fairly aware that the high achieved in March managed to take out the high in February, but still the wider trend is still very much in play. And if you continue to press on lower from here, we could be looking at retesting uh, the, the, the lows of March in at 1 spot 11.76. And should we go south of that, we could be looking ahead now towards 1 spot 11.10. Uh, if you do manage to, to bounce back and press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the kind of 114 area uh, or, or, or uh, even the, the early March high of 1 spot 14.48. And look now at pound dollar. So despite all, so in the last few sessions, we have seen a bit of a sell-off in, in the pound versus US dollar. But broadly speaking, since since kind of mid-December, um, the pound has been pushing higher versus the US dollar. And while we hold above this red line here, the 2-day moving average, which comes to play just in around the kind of 130 mark, if you can hold above that, it's possible, it's, it's likely we could actually continue in the kind of wider upward trend that we've been in uh, for the last three months. So if you can press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting 132. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking heading towards this region here in around the kind of 130, uh, it's, it's the one spot 3360, uh, 33, one spot 3370 region in around here. Uh, it's only if you have a fairly sizable break below the kind of dirty moving average, uh, which is just south of one spot 30, could then we actually going to pave the way for further losses. And we could potentially head back down towards the uh, the lows of uh, mid February, which come into play in around the kind of one spot 27, uh, 75 area. Now let's take a quick look at the uh, the big events of the week. Uh, the week ahead can be found on our website if you go to cmcmarkets.com. Under news and analysis, you will find uh, you will you'll find the updates uh, that myself and the other analysts around the world uh, post. So go to the week ahead article now. 
we could take a look. So, um, what, what's the, obviously the news in relation to Brexit keeps changing, but the last the last I was was um, the last I was stated was that we're going to have a number of indicative votes again today uh, on various different matters for everything from the customs union. Uh, to the possibility of a second referendum, a, con a, a confirmationary referendum, which is if, if that goes ahead, the question of the ballot paper could be, should the UK leave the European Union on these terms or should the UK remain in the European Union? There's also talk of Theresa May's withdrawal agreement, which even though it was voted down three times, there is talk that it could be voted for a fourth time. So <clears throat> if you are trading the pound, or the first few hundred, please keep an eye out for what's going on in relation to Brexit because things are changing quite rapidly. Um, on, so we've, we've had a number of the various manufacturing reports from China, Asia, so China, Eurozone, and also um, the UK today. Tomorrow we have the Reserve Bank of Australia meeting on Tuesday. Um, on Wednesday we have second quarter results from Walgreens. Um, on Wednesday we have the various different service, service uh, PMI reports from around the globe. On Thursday, uh, Saga Group uh, have full your numbers out. Uh, we also have an update uh, from Constellation Brands on, 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 in terms of fourth quarter figures on Thursday. And on Friday, because it's the first Friday of the month, we will have US non-farm payrolls. And also, we will have a Canadian job support as well on Friday. If you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review and click reviews. And that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.